Very good evening, everyone. My name is Shubham Singh Hania, and I am your mentor for UGC NET Paper One, Paper Two, Commerce and Management. And today I have Mr. Dinesh Mohan, who has cracked his GRF in management in first attempt with scoring sixty-eight percent. So I welcome you, Dinesh, on our channel, Anu Jindal. Hey, Shubham. Thank you for having me. First of all, heartiest congratulations. And one thing that I want to tell uh, our viewers about Dinesh that there's there's one beautiful quote that fits in uh, into his personality is do a job that you like and you will never have to work a day in your life. So probably he's somebody who has taken a gap of eight years, identified that he wanted to get into research, and that's how he started his preparation for UGC NET. And today he's sitting in front of us, clearing UGC NET GRF in management with sixty eight percent. so i'm sure dinesh that the discussion that we are going to have today is going to be very inspiring and it is also going to set a broad landmarks and examples for a lot of people who think that taking a gap uh, makes you difficult to crack exam and that's how people are going to learn some beautiful things of how to tackle such challenges and crack this exam so let's start with the interview dinesh sure Ready. So my first question uh, to you is that what all things have you done before cracking this prestigious exam of UGC NET? Please tell to our students. Yeah. So um, I am. Um, I graduated in engineering in two thousand five. So it's a long while back now. Um, I worked for five years in an engineering company. Uh, it was an engineering stream itself. But during that, I was selected for a, um, a leadership development program. So I did my masters. Uh, in engineering management as part of an after uh, work uh, course uh, which pilani had this course uh, with the industry it was an in industry in, in, uh, institute interface if you have heard of those kind of programs so that is what got me into management in the first place or management studies in the first place so engineering management and uh, when when i had saved up saved up enough money uh, in 2009 i decided to get my cat So I gave CAT in 2009. Uh, went to Ahmedabad, did my um, postgraduate program there. I also went on a dual degree program to France from Ahmedabad. So got two MBA degrees from IMA and from ESSEC in 2012. I finished it, and from 2012 I started working uh, with a consulting company, um, and then moved to a client, uh, an oil major again. Uh, moved to them, and I started working there. So when I turned 35, I decided to give myself a break. So I took a break from work, and uh, during that time, I uh, decided that this is what I wanted to do in terms of uh, my future. So research was the way forward for me, and that is when I decided I'm going to do uh, UGC NET and uh, research for the future. Right. So I think that's a very uh, inspiring story because. what i can see is that you have been a medical planner as well along with being a wonderful candidate because see cracking i am amdabad is no easy deal so i think uh, that 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 comes out from a very good experience and very good academic background i don't think so there would have been much difficulty for you in cracking ugc net is that so, so? they are different beasts the exams are different right cat is more uh, towards logic and right. uh, quant and the capability to uh, do more in a short period of time which is useful for uh, ggc net as much also right. but the thing was uh, i think uh, we have spoken about this before so i have a very um, bad memory <laughs> so right. it's easy for me to crack cat so i have a, for example i have this mensa 99% uh, 99 percentile thing so high iq society membership right. but when it comes to memory i'm very very bad so i okay. always uh, Falter in those kind of things. UGC NET was a big challenge for me in that term. So each one okay. for every person, the exam is going to be different. The way you right. approach it is going to be different. And, uh, right. Yeah, both are difficult. Be they are not e either exam is not easy. It's about right. how you prepare and how you manage your time and uh, how you actually right. do on the day of exam. Right. But I'm sure that <clears throat> that you, as you are already a meticulous planner, so you must have uh, planned everything so well that it might not have been. that difficult as it looks like to be uh, that brings me to the next question that when did you actually start your preparation and how right so like i said uh, i took that one year break and uh, i had actually quit on my birthday <laughs> the last day of my work was on my birthday itself and the next birthday i said this is when i'm going to start my research because i had already decided during that time i will um, work on research and that is what i'm going to do for the future so i think march 3rd 
I decided that it's my birthday again. Um, and April 10th, I had a conversation with Anu Jindal's health desk and on 11th, I spoke to you and right. that is what kicked off my preparation. So right. my idea was uh, December 2020 was going to be my target exam. I was going to give uh, June 2020 as a practice kind of exam just uh, to see how it goes. And uh, during that time, it was uh, after Corona hit and everything changed, my whole plan changed and uh, June became September. And uh, for me, in my case, December also became September. So first uh, attempt and I was able to crack uh, the GCN. It was like right. a blessing in disguise to say the least. Right. So, so what I can see is that probably you have devoted approximately six months for your preparation of net, right? Right. Uh, six months. Yes. But, uh, it was more uh, like three months because, uh, right. the first three months was really under Corona times. It was like uh, very difficult right? managing. I have two kids and, uh, right. they are, uh, their classes, uh, a little one also very uh, one and a half year old baby. So right. for me, Dedicated time was three months, but yes, six over the six months, I have done a lot of uh, things to help me plan and uh, streamline my preparation for UGC. Right. So I'm sure that uh, that it's going to be very inspiring for a lot of people who have uh, started preparing net uh, as you started uh, pretty late in terms of your age. So it's going to be inspiring for them because see, I can understand it would have been very challenging managing all of these things. <laughs> right. So that brings me to the next question is like, what were the study materials that you have used and how have you uh, prepared with them? Okay. So I was originally started uh, looking at uh, YouTube videos for um, um, past year papers and uh, how the, uh, I mean, subject is split into different sections and so on. Uh, most of the uh, videos were in Hindi, which was a difficult thing for me because it's not my native. Right. And um, so I, that's when I spoke to you and I was talking about PDF materials and how they are, what is in English and what is in Hindi, if there is going to be any uh, differences and so on. So for me, primarily for paper two, it was always about um, the PDF sources that uh, was there in the infancy app uh, right. the, on a general coursework right. uh, and supplemented with a lot of um, web searches, right? So every topic, there is a lot of information out there. It is not right. uh, difficult. The key was for me, I, when I did that, I looked at the PDFs, I looked at uh, uh, web, web information, but I prepared my, my own notes. So my right. notes were my uh, um, Bible for that. So and I think uh, uh, some information about the notes can be shared here. So one of the key, one example is I uh, looked at all the HR uh, or OB theories and I made right. a chart which showed me in a simple uh, way how many theories are there what they talk about how they are interlinked where, what is the years and so on and that helped me probably answer three or four questions in uh, thing, right? so each one has each person will have a different way of uh, making their own notes and uh, i think that will help um, a lot it helps in reinforcing your preparation but it also helps you revise in the future so whatever material anyone is using it's key that you have something of your own which will help you uh, revise in the future so but right. to be honest, uh, the Infinity app was very useful for me because it's organized uh, quite well and you were able to go to a particular topic and start from that point and then uh, supplement it with more information from that. Right. So I think to summarize is what, what you did is you uh, use the PDF for your conceptual clarity along with the internet sources, and then you prepare your own notes. And that, I think that probably helps because when you are preparing your own notes is easier for you to revise at the very last moment when the exams are near. So I think that helped really beautiful for you. Right. Uh, now my next question is that what has been your daily routine because you had to manage your family also you had to manage other things as well and we were into the corona pandemic that was uh, blowing everything away so how did you manage things and how much time have you dedicated Dinesh okay so I'll start with the time but I want to diverge a little bit here right in terms right. of how I started my preparation also right. but um, for me um, the proper part of the preparation like you said I have prepared for six months but uh, Maybe in the first three months, it was an hour uh, here and there looking at videos and trying to understand mostly around paper one, at least to get familiar with the subjects, which are very, very new to me, uh, teaching right. aptitude, research aptitude, higher education. All these are topics that I've never covered before. Uh, the other part of it, the 15 marks are of logical reasoning, the quant and uh, data interpretation uh, was very easy. For, 
at least for me that was my strong point right so i was able to score 15 even in the mock scene in the previous cap and so on so it was the easy part so the remaining part of it i looked at uh, uh, the news topics for me and i looked at how they are organized and how i can actually uh, learn them easier so that was right. the focus for me uh, and the last three months i really spent uh, three to two to three or three to four hours per day every day uh, excluding the weekends of course uh, so i spent that time and i dedicated that time it is not uh, when i say three hours it might sound very less for a few people but that is not uh, uh, the way i look at it i those three hours i was focused on this because more than that the two kids i i can tell you clear now it is that it's not possible with a um, five year old and a one and a half year old because they have their own timing and they have a lot of attention that they need to be given but those 3 hours uh, fortunately with my wife's assistance i was able to dedicate for uh, ugc math right so uh, and i did a lot of preparation during that time and when you think about it 3 uh, 20 days per month 3 uh, hours that is a lot of time that is 180 hours which is more than enough for uh, paper 2 and even paper 1 together so that is uh, from a timing perspective that's how much i the time is spent on the paper itself or preparing for the paper itself but one of the key things that i started doing was uh, uh, before i even uh, uh, started my preparation i took last year for past year papers two papers i took i made a table of uh, how many questions i was i did solved all of them how many questions i was sure about and i got right how many questions i got wrong how many questions i did not know anything about so basically those topics needed a lot of new preparation and i split them up into the 10 course areas into and uh, split the 10 course subjects or uh, parts into 20 to 30 uh, sections and in each of the sections i saw what uh, what was the uh, number of questions that came how many i was strong in how many i was i didn't know about and uh, i was able to identify my weaknesses there and of course my strengths also so i split my time into uh, hours of preparation for each of these subjects and some of those subjects like uh, if you take operations for example even though i was strong in for someone it might be their weak point but the number of questions is very very less yes and the amount of time you need to put on it is something that you need to then look at all the hours that you have split if you want to spend so many hours preparing for ugc net or if you have only this much time to prepare for ugc net right. how can you organize your time in these topics to maximize your uh, outcome right that is what you need to look at and uh, i was able to do that and every time i gave a mock or a uh past year paper through my preparation through the six months uh, or last three months at least i gave uh, a few mocks every two weeks or every um, you know, in the first three months i gave it every month i think three uh papers and then uh, six in the last right including past year papers so that's probably nine uh, mocks i gave for myself and uh, i was able to track my progress across uh, across all the sections across all the papers and see whether i'm progressing if i'm not progressing in a particular area what is going wrong so so i kept that as a baseline and from there i kept building the, on that preparation right so i think it's it's very important to know about the exam before starting for the exam so that is something that you did you identified that what what is this exam demanding what are the key areas where you need to work upon and then finally that is something that i would like to reiterate to all our students that sabse pehle apni strength and weaknesses identify karni bahut zaruri hai because until you know what are your strength and weaknesses you won't be able to work upon them so i think that is something that dinesh did and that is how he has cleared his grf in the first attempt So Dinesh my next question to you is that how useful have has been the past year papers because a lot of students ask us that sir kya sirf past years laga ke chale jane se exam clear ho jayega so what has been your strategy and what what how useful were these past years yeah past year papers were very useful like i said i couldn't have started my preparation without past year papers you hmm. need to understand like you need to understand all the uh, things about the exam and past year papers are the good best place to start there but that is not the only thing that you need right so it is about also like i said other mocks uh, if i take anuj jindal's practice mocks uh, on the website right it was very useful for me not just from tracking my progress perspective but also in terms of uh, understanding how the exam day is going to be how i'm going to actually give the paper on Uh, exam so i don't look at past year papers as a separate entity i look at it as part of the mocks or part right. of the practice for the exam 
So when you combine these two things and say past year papers and mocks are going to help you in not just preparing, but also tracking your progress and continuing to identify your uh, weak points, or strengths, and so on, it becomes a very very useful part of the preparation. If you only read and don't give mocks, it's going to be not not going to be good. Okay? Right. Mock, but only giving mocks and only giving practice papers and not uh, preparing anything else or identifying what. You have actually done in the paper is not going to help. Just for the sake of giving a mock, don't give. Right. Just for sake of giving the past year paper, don't do it. Right. Think about what you are doing with the past year paper and use it because it's very very powerful when you use it the right way. And right. Uh, I'm sure your uh, uh, counselor, like Shubham, can probably help you in identifying. Okay, these are the areas. What should I do? If you ask him a question, he's going to answer that in the group or uh, in the Telegram group or in uh, uh, the, during the videos, right? Live session right. and so on. So focus on that part, and when you, you uh, when you are taking the classes, right? Um, so live session. Unfortunately for me, with me being weak, I did not attend too many live sessions. Right. So whatever I have attended, when you are talking about those concepts, if people have done the mocks already, right. their questions will be very very targeted. It's very right. easy for them to understand when you are explaining something how it right. relates back to the exam. And right. if people don't do the mocks or do don't do the past year papers, that won't be very easy. Right. just reading about the subject and coming back you is not going to help so that's that would be my advice right use the they are very very useful past year papers but you have to use it in the right way right Whatever, right uh, right so i think there has to be a balanced approach that at one end you are using those past years and mocks to track your progress and at the very same time you are also focusing on conceptual clarity and i would like to focus here a lot of uh, a one important aspect that what used to happen before 2015 actually that before nta and cbsc took over is when ugc used to conduct the examination a lot of questions that, that were coming were repeated so so that's how a lot of uh, seniors probably guided students or best guided okay. students that you go on preparing for past years and you will be able to crack them and and i think a lot of students have actually did that but after 2015 when cbsc took over when the syllabus got changed and when nta came into picture nta has started framing new concepts new concept based questions which are majorly assertion reasoning question and that okay. is what we focused on in our live sessions also by uh, you you must be able to recall dinesh if some uh, probably that there was one thing like bouncers that became a lot famous in our live sessions that were okay. the tricky one tricky one questions so i think that probably helped uh, students analyze that how to apply those how to apply those concepts uh in those assertion reasoning based question and i think that is very very important for right. for future aspirants as well right and from the past year paper i also see a difference right now uh, with the uh, with this year we had that uh, passage based question which is right very very i mean it's completely conceptual right it's about understanding what is happening there and right. applying it's it's a actual test of your management capability right uh, if you work probably for some people who have worked in hr itself it might have been easy that right. one but it is going to be easy for everyone if you have that conceptual clarity i and i i know that uh, from your videos you focus a lot on that conceptual clarity and right. people need to understand the reason there is so much focus on that is because it is important and it is getting more and more important as we progress through the years honestly i didn't know about 2015 papers and how they were because i didn't go that far right. behind right? right i only took the last 3 years right the uh, i guess of paper and uh, right. that is six papers in total which was more right. than enough for me right. and i Absolutely. didn't know about the paper right. so right uh, for me probably that's a good thing because i wasn't clouded by uh, so many papers years, uh, yes uh, thing, yeah. So. yeah but i think dinesh that you have pointed out a very important aspect here that a lot of students uh, ask me that sir five question and you take 30 minutes for the live session but in those 30 30 minutes what i try is that if if there are four options in every question then i try that i explain 20 concepts in that particular video and that probably helps because uh, many a times what happens that you're just focusing on questions uh, that is the quantity of the question and not the quality of the question right. so that is uh, i think that is something which is very important for your ugc net exam considering that now the questions are coming out to be more analytical and more application based question right yeah and it is also important for revision purposes right when you are talking about those questions and uh, introducing so many concepts or reintroducing so many concepts it's about uh, people revising those same concepts again and again, again, and again. they again. might have read it already they might be able to answer the question but there might be some part of it that you forget right. and when the go, going about the conceptual clarity kind of uh, um or 
the way the sessions are held using concepts and right. how we can split it in concepts is very useful right so, right from a revision right. perspective right so we have spoken a lot about your uh, the strategy of how, what you used to crack ugc net in your first attempt scoring 68% in management now that brings me to the question that now since you have cracked it what is the plan further what are you planning to do further please tell us something about that yeah so my focus is uh, research i have a specific topic in mind i think we have discussed about it right and uh, when i started when i decided that i was going to pursue research Uh, even before i uh, decided on ugc net i had spoken to professors uh, uh, in few uh, a couple of uh, colleges to understand how they are looking at uh, um, the research topic and what they think what feedback could they give how could i start my preparation application and i spoke to you also about how things actually work in uh, institutions and all that and the key for me is i want to take my research forward uh, my focus is that Uh, particular research that is what pushed me into UGC net. UGC net was not any other, uh, or it was a starting point for me to get into the research field or as an entrance for uh, doing my PhD with the uh, research. So it's not an end all kind of thing for me. Uh, UGC net and getting into a PhD or UGC net and getting the job now, but rather a starting point for my research. I am focused on my research. I have already started working on my or worked a lot on my proposal. I'm fine tuning it. probably read to 20 30 papers online already related to the topic which i i'll continue doing right i have to i have dedicated the next month till 15th of uh, january to continue doing more literature review and right. uh, fine tuning my uh, uh, proposal so that i can take it to forward with someone who can actually guide me in the uh, uh, research in the future right so i personally uh, feel that uh, it's very important to be very clear the moment you start your preparation so since now dinesh you are clear that you want to get into research i think that is going to be very helpful because you're not wasting time so the moment you have given your ugc net exam i think you must have really started with your uh, literature review portion and you must have started working on your research proposal and sop part so i think that is going to help you and save a lot of time and it is also going to take you to a lot more places so uh, kudos to that now that brings me to the last question that what a, what is one advice that you would like to give to the future aspirants who are going to take ugc net in probably june 2021 right um so don't think of the exam as difficult or easy right so focus on your preparation and we talked about the strength and weakness part right focus on that start so your preparation that way and make sure that you are addressing those strengths Uh, or reinforcing those strengths and addressing those weaknesses uh, you shouldn't be spending too much time on things that um, are not going to help you in the exam day uh, focus on conceptual clarity like shubham said on particular topics so that you can answer a wide variety of questions in that topic and uh, reinforce that if you need with a little bit more uh, uh, textbook knowledge but rather start focusing on that conceptual clarity and uh, your videos are going to help uh, students a lot in that uh, aspect so if you have the time if the students have the time uh, make it a habit to attend those everyday sessions right like so that you can ask your questions you can um, start revising along with the whole group of other people to right. uh, get you through this uh, year it's it's an easy part of the preparation it's not going to be something that you need to prepare earlier for you just come there and listen and any doubts you have you are going to ask so it, that right. is the easiest part of the preparation and then your notes are going to be uh, your friend so i don't know how many people say this but uh, most i am uh, sure that at least 90% of the people who uh, crack the paper have their own notes right uh, this is a form of it's easy for you to revise but it's also something that allows you to when you are writing something allows you to remember uh, right. as you write right. so and it's something that is coded in your uh, um, your language okay uh, if i can put it that way so when you code it in your language it's easy for you to look at it and uh, start remembering things as you go forward so that's what i would say uh, whatever i have done might help a lot of people there will be whenever you look at interviews or uh, looking for advice from how people people have uh, cut previously right you will have some common points so you can right. all pick up those common points and there will be certain differences so someone like me who is who finished mba in 12 2012 
and i am amdabad is not very keen on remembering concepts right so right. the way we work is at little in amdabad it was uh, around um, uh, solving real life uh, situations right. so we had all open book exams so we never had to remember anything and we can look at the book but it was uh, focused on concepts and how you solve uh, uh, a situation um, case studies basically it's case study based approach right. uh, the education itself so it's very difficult for me to come back and uh, remember concepts for the exam but right if you as soon as you understand those concepts it's easy for you to clear uh, a uh, certain number of questions and those certain number of questions are more than enough for you to crack right yeah. right and don't think of the exam as a difficult one continue identifying your strengths and weaknesses and you will be able to crack so uh, yeah so i think like dinesh has uh, pointed a very important aspect that conceptual clarity is the major key which is going to take you to places and not just about the exam since you we want to get into teaching this exam is for the uh, for the entry to the assistant professor so probably conceptual clarity is something that is going to help you even when you start your research or you start your teaching because you will have to teach those concepts to kids so again i think that is going to be very helpful so thank you so much uh, dinesh for uh, finding time from your busy, uh, busy schedule and coming on our channel uh, of for sharing the strategy that you have used and sharing your insights with us students so thank you once again we wish you a wonderful future and we are sure that you're going to be uh, turning out into your beautiful researcher in future and good wishes from the whole team of anujinder thank you once thank again you. dinesh thank you very much and uh, like i said as teachers we it is our duty to give back right? so when I've taken something from uh, you guys in terms of preparation and helping you right. practice. I have to give back also. So uh, it it is no bother at all. And thank you very much for all the help that you guys have done, and uh, all the best for uh, future aspirants. And uh, I believe you can. Okay. Thank you so much, Dinesh.